This week on the Fundamentals Report, we look at one industry sector that will noticeably outperform the cannabis green rush. Investing in high growth trend is proven to be one of the best ways to build wealth, and although the cannabis sector has proven successful for many investors, there is one industry sector that is set to significantly outperform cannabis. This same sector is the focus of giants such as Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and innovative content and technology leader Real-Time VR, trading as RLTR. Virtual reality is the highly disruptive technology which is quickly becoming part of all consumers' lives and will impact almost every major industry sector. Over the next few years, VR will begin to realize its potential with an estimated 171 million active VR users, generating nearly $121 billion in sales. For more information on VR and other stories, visit thefundamentalsreport.com. Welcome to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, the show that delves into the ups and downs of the stock market, changes in the economy, and news from the worlds of real estate and technology. From breaking news on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, or the overseas market, to updates on the bond market, if there's money to be made, we've got you covered. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and today is actually um, February 6th, my nephew's birthday. Ten years ago today, I was in the delivery room with his mom waiting for him to finally make his appearance. He was very stubborn about wanting to actually come out, probably because it was Montana in February. And he thought, "Mm, no, it's warm in here. It's below zero out there. I, I think I'm good. He did finally make his appearance, of course, and he was beautiful, and he still is. So he's 10, and he loves the poo emoji, (laughs) and you know, all those good 10-year-old boy kind of things. So it got me thinking um, about planning for uh, a child, planning financially for a child, planning financially for a child's future, what that all looks like, because... As you may or may not know, by the time one baby is 18, that doesn't mean, you know, all of your babies, if you have more than one, but by the time one baby is 18, parents will have spent close to a quarter of a million dollars on that baby. Wow. Um, you know, of course, it, it's not going to be cheap to raise a child. There are ways that you can do it less expensively than others, but um you you want to you want to have a plan going into having a baby. And you have to plan for so many things. You have to plan for where that baby is going to sleep and play and you know, is your house set up for that? And you know, there's all various stages of planning before the baby's born, after the baby comes, all of those things. But financial planning shouldn't be left behind in terms of planning for a new child. So, um, here is a list from Mint, uh, for personal finance tips to help ensure you know, a better financial future for your child and for you, of course, as parents, because you don't want to um, focus solely on uh, preparing for your child's financial future and forget about your own. Remember, you still have to save for retirement. So if it is a, if you are a first time parent, or maybe it's been several years since your last child, you might not have much of an idea about the expenses of a baby's first year. Um, Babycenter.com has a baby cost calculator that can help you estimate first year expenses. So you need to be sure that your new budget accounts for time off work after the baby is born um, or a 
decrease in income if one parent will then stay at home with the baby or if both parents are working then you need to make sure you know what you're spending on child care what you will spend on child care you need to have all of these things in mind sooner rather than later so you are not hit with um, decreased income or increased expenses that you are not prepared for if you if your child will need child care you should start now, I mean, now I, that's relative. <laughs> Where are you in this? Your child could be two. You could be uh, six minutes pregnant. You know, we don't know. Um, but if both parents or if it's a single parent household or whatever it might be, but if uh, the caregivers of this child are going to be uh, continuing their paid jobs, then you will need to figure out child care, daycare options. Good facilities often have waiting lists, of course, and so you should explore options like whether your employer has a flexible spending account, also known as an FSA, which you can use to pay for your child care using before tax dollars. Um, an FSA, if you aren't familiar with that, allows you to allocate a certain amount of your paycheck to go into that FSA. It is pre-tax. That means you don't have to pay taxes on that money. And you can use it for specific things like child care. And it's there. It's in that FSA account. So you don't have to worry about um, it disappearing as you're paying bills during the month. But um, um you can also learn about the child care tax credit and um, what you have to do to use both your FSA and your tax credit. You may want to look into that to see what uh, what you have to do in terms of the tax credit. Um, let's let's actually look about look into that a little bit more. So um, to qualify for either an FSA or the child care tax credit, both you and your spouse must have earned income. Uh, the exception to this is one of you with a full-time student for five months of the tax year. If you work for a company that offers an FSA, here's how to figure out maybe which op option is best for you. Um, a flexible spending account for dependent care is not something that you can, of course, set up on your own, but many companies do offer one to their employees, uh, which allows you to put aside up to $5,000 2500 for married individuals filing separate returns before taxes to pay those to dependent care expenses. The amount is deducted from your paycheck and then reimbursed to you for qualified expenses, money you paid for services that enable you to work, such as at-home care, a nanny or a babysitter, and care outside the home, such as day daycare or after-school care. Uh, please note that in most cases, to obtain FSA reimbursement, you'll have to provide receipts for payment from and a social security number or tax identification for every child, every care provider, including nannies and other babysitters. So keep that in mind. You will need that information. Because this is a pre-tax deduction, you won't have to pay federal, social security, Medicare, or state taxes on the amount. Your contribution can't exceed the income of the spouse who earns the least. So to set aside the full 5000 each year, each parent must make at least that much. An FSA essentially serves as a tax deduction, reducing your adjusted gross income. And this may allow you to have more itemized tax deductions for the year and increase the amount allowed for personal exemptions. You should definitely think carefully as to how much money you want to earmark for that FSA because you forfeit any amount that you don't use during the calendar year. So if you sign up to have $3,000 put in your FSA and you only spend $2,000 on child care, you will lose that extra $1,000. So you definitely need to um, do the math beforehand and figure out what your expenses are going to be. Now, FSA, that's FSA. So what about the child care tax credit? The IRS offers a 20 to 35% kickback on up to $3,000, 6,000 if you have two or more kids, of qualifying child care expenses you accrued in the year. So if your AGI is 15,000 a year or less, you get the full child care tax credit. If it's more than 43,000, the figure drops to 20%. So if you earn $45,000 a year and spend $6,000 on child care for two kids, the tax credit equals just 1,200. Qualified expenses are defined in the same way they are for FSAs, and as with an FSA, those expenses can't exceed the earned income of the spouse who earns 
the lesser amount of the um, incomes in your household. So generally, the more you earn, the more you'll benefit from um, an FSA, uh, particularly if you're at or above the 25% federal tax bracket. Taxpayers in the 15% federal tax bracket who only have one child and have qualified expenses of at least 3000 may be best off with the FSA as well. Um, so really, you just need to... You talk to your tax professional, uh, talk to your spouse, talk to people who understand all these lovely things and figure out which option is best for you. Which one's going to give you the most, um, the most bang for your buck, (laughs) if you will. So if you are planning on a baby, uh, yeah, or trying to figure all this out, definitely figure out your child care situation. You need to do that anyway, but also then figure out a, if your company offers an FSA, B, if they do offer an FSA, which one is going to work better for you, the FSA or the um, the tax credit? Let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we're going to be talking about building an emergency fund. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, and I'll be right back. Cryptocurrency is changing the way people interact with their money. It lets you be your own bank. But the problem is that the places you shop at don't accept crypto. BlockCard solves that. BlockCard is the easiest, cheapest, and best way to use your cryptocurrency to buy what you want, when you want, at over 50 million merchants globally. If you hold cryptocurrency, then you need a BlockCard. BlockCard is a pioneer in a new digital age that lets you use your crypto for everyday use. BlockCard has no exchange fees no deposit fees, and no transaction fees. Sign up at freeblockcard.com and instantly get access to spend your crypto. What are you waiting for? Be your own bank and get a block card. Visit freeblockcard.com. That's freeblockcard.com. Are you a business owner? Someone interested in the latest news that might affect your business? Then check out the GSMC Business News Podcast, a show dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning business, technology, and the stock market. Get a head start on the day as we keep you updated on the latest goings-on on on Wall Street, money, jobs, and technology. The GSMC Business News Podcast has you covered. GSMC Financial News Podcast. We are talking about planning for your child's financial future, you and your child's financial future. So far, we've talked about planning for that first year of the baby's life and the unexpected or maybe expected expenses, as well as um, what to do about child care. As I mentioned before the break, now we're going to talk about building an emergency fund. Um You should work toward eliminating credit card debt as soon as you plan to have a child um, and to do your best to save at least three months living expenses in an emergency account. This is something, of course, that you should do in general, but it definitely is important when you have dependents, when you have people who are, you know, little and <laughs> need your care and you, you, you know there's always things that happen that are unexpected in life and so um, you need to save that three months just in case something does happen you have that cushion you have time to then find another job etc um, if one parent will be quitting their job after the baby arrives try then to save six months uh, living expenses before he or she stops working just Good to have that in your in your savings. Uh, you need to estimate prenatal costs and delivery costs because depending on your insurance, some things will be covered, some things will not. You need to understand your insurance as well as how much this baby is going to cost right out of the gate. No pun intended. Um, if you have typical employer-provided health insurance, Prenatal and delivery care for an uncomplicated birth will cost around $2,250 out of pocket. 
it's probably an estimate, but um, you can ask uh, human resources or your insurer if they have current figures on those out-of-pocket expenses for prenatal care and delivery. So you can put these expenses into your personal financial plan. Uh, so definitely look into that. You don't want to be blindsided by what it's going to cost because not just, not just the delivery, but all of your prenatal appointments, et cetera, you want to find out. Uh, you know, you should already know what your co-pays are, but then you want to find out, are there, are there going to be any surprises? Are there, is there anything that's not covered that you are going to end up paying out of pocket? And, you know, you want to spend this time focusing on that new person in your life, focusing on mama healing and getting, um, you know, re- recovering from that birth. You, you don't want to be freaked out because there were hidden expenses or expenses, unexpected expenses that you just weren't prepared for. Um, plan number five is plan a comprehensive insurance review. You should review your life insurance and disability insurance needs in light of your growing family. If you're young, term life insurance is inexpensive and necessary. Uh, You may be able to purchase disability insurance through your employer. If you don't know how much insurance you need, there are online calculators that can help. This is not a topic that a lot of people want to consider. Disability insurance, you know, maybe is one thing, one conversation that, that they don't mind having, but a lot of people do not want to think about life insurance. They do not want to think about the possibility of not being around. But if you are preparing for your child's future, you need to consider the fact that you may not be around for that future. I know it's not the cheeriest of subjects and it can be a difficult conversation to have, but it's just one more tool to have in your toolkit to be prepared for that child's future, for your spouse's future as well. Even if you do not currently have children, you want to have that in place. So if anything, God forbid, should happen to you and or your spouse, you want to be, you want to be covered. You want those left behind to be covered. And I know I'm sounding like one of those um, really depressing commercials right now where they're like, if you were to die right now, would your family be covered? I hate those commercials, but uh, as annoying as they are, they do make a good point under all of the hype. <laughs> um, another difficult topic uh, along the same lines is to make your will. Again, people don't want to think about death. They don't want to think that they are going to die anytime soon, but life is crazy and you never know what will happen. So it is essential to have a will, to have that that plan in place. You need a will in order to appoint a guardian for your child or for your children. You do not want to have them just left with no plan. Um, maybe you have extended family, maybe you have, maybe you don't, but you need to know what will happen in the uh, event. Hopefully it never happens, but in the event that you are not around to be able to take care of your child and or children. Um, you don't need to know the name of your a forthcoming child in order to make a will. Um, so you do not have to know, you do not have to have the name picked out yet, uh, you know, or 100% sure that you have the name picked out. Or if you do not know, if, you, if you've chosen not to find out uh, the sex of your baby, so you don't, you know, you don't know what name you might be choosing. Uh, you do not need to have that in order to make a will. So make an appointment with your attorney and ask him or her to recommend someone if they cannot do wills um have him or her recommend someone who is experienced in drafting wills um and and being helpful in those cases if you don't already have an attorney then you want to do some research you want to ask around you want to find someone who has experience drafting wills and who can help walk you through the process and let you know everything that you need to know to get that process done um Start acquiring baby gear. We move from, <laughs> we move from wills to starting to acquire baby gear. Eh, it's a bit of whiplash, but no, um, so, you know, we're back to thinking about a baby, planning for a baby, and 
And uh, the sooner you start acquiring gear, the better. You don't need everything. You know, you don't need something right now that the child will need when he or she is five, for instance. But um, ask the parent of other children, of, of children who are a year old, a two-year-old, three-year-old, three year old, what they have, what they like, what they thought they needed that was absolutely ridiculous, what they didn't have that then turned out to be essential, etc. Um, you, when you are expecting a child, you are marketed to like you have never been marketed to before. People will try to convince you that you need everything to make that baby's life and yours as easy as possible. Um, it's not always easy to know what is actually necessary and what is not. So um, you can reg- register for gifts, but also talk to other parents and find out what they actually use before you register for this, that, and the other thing, or before you go out and buy something that is really expensive that is just going to sit in the corner and gather dust. Time for our second break of the podcast when we come back, we'll be wrapping up this list of what to do, um, what to expect financially when you're expecting, I guess we could have called that. Oh man, I should have um, named that this episode that, but that's okay. Uh, stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, and I'll be right back. Do you work in the world of marketing and advertising? Are you a media buyer or the owner of an agency? Have you been looking for a podcast to help stay on top of all the goings on of those worlds? The GSMC Marketing News Podcast is dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning marketing and advertising. Get the latest marketing news from what major businesses have planned for the coming year to the newest trends in advertising from podcasts, digital and streaming to the old standbys of radio, television and billboards. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast has you covered, whether you're a marketing agent or a business trying to expand your brand. Welcome back to the GSMC Financial News Podcast. We are talking about planning for a child or children, um, specifically planning for a child in this case, but there are tips in here as well for planning for any amount of children. (laughs) Um, Number eight is to put cash gifts into a 529 account. Most states offer 529 plans, which are education saving plans that can help families save for colleges. If you have never heard of this, it is definitely something that you would want to look into if you are hoping that your, uh, that your child decides to go to college. You know, you, you need to plan for that ahead of time. Um, so a 529 plan is a college saving plan that offers tax and financial aid benefits. Uh, they may be used also to save and invest for kindergarten through 12th grade tuition in addition to college costs. So you should look into that. There are two types of 529 plans, college savings plans and prepaid tuition plans. Almost every state has at least one 529 plan. There is also a 529 plan operated by a group of private colleges and universities. Um, they are named after Section 529 of the Internal Revenue Code, which was added in 1996 to authorize tax-free status for, quote, qualified tuition programs. Earnings in 529 plans accumulate on a tax-deferred basis, and distributions are not taxed federally when used for qualified higher education expenses. The definition of qualified higher education expenses was expanded in 2015 to include computers, in 2017 to include up to $10,000 annually in K through 12 tuition and in 2019 to include student loan payments and costs of apprenticeship programs. Very cool. Um, you can invest in any state 529 plan, not just your own state's 529 plan. 
Uh, these plans can be used to pay for college costs at any qualified college nationwide. In most plans, your choice of college is not affected by the state that sponsored your 529 college savings plan. Um, you can be, for instance, a California resident, invest in a Vermont plan, and send your student to college in North Carolina. So, you know, you're not, you're not locked into a certain, to a certain way of doing that. So that is number eight. And number nine, prepare to enroll the baby on your health plan. Of course, you will want to do this. You'll have 30 days after the baby's birth to, um, Put him or her onto your health insurance plan. Get the paperwork and fill out as much as possible before the birth so you'll have less to do once the baby arrives. Um, remember then, uh, and then this, this is, uh, after your baby arrives. So these nine things were things to think about before the baby arrives. Yeah, yeah, I know you got a lot of stuff going on as you're planning for this baby, but, uh, after the baby arrives, remember that the sooner you start saving for college, the better. Yikes, right? But, um, time plus compounding are your best friends when it comes to saving for education. But also bear in mind that saving for your retirement is, if anything, more important than saving for college. They do not offer scholarships for retirement. Somebody should look into that. Um, <laughs> that would be awesome. You could fill out a scholarship and uh, for all your retirement plans. Anyway, uh, personal finances, finances, of course, are going to take on new dimensions when you add a child or more children to your family, whether that's through birth or adoption. Um, you need to start early. You need to plan carefully. You need to prepare as much as humanly possible for any future bumps that you may encounter, financial bumps that you may encounter uh, or that may come with that expanding plan. So you want to find tools that are going to help you to um, to budget, to track your spending and keep track of what you're saving for not only your children's education, but also your own retirement. So you want to make sure that everyone's financial futures are well in hand uh, to the best of your ability, of course. So that will wrap it up for this episode of the GSMC Financial News Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, if you are a fan of the podcast, please go ahead and subscribe as well as giving us a five-star review. If you are in the mood, that would be amazing. Also, follow us on social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter. We would love to hear your comments and thoughts. What did you find the most helpful in planning for your children's births and planning for your children's futures? Would love to hear your comments and um, experiences with that. So go ahead and interact with us on social media, GSMC underscore finance for Twitter and um, Golden State Media Concepts Financial News Podcast on Facebook. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. Hope you have something fun planned, whatever your definition of fun is. If that's being productive, then that's cool too. And I will uh, talk to you again on Tuesday. You've been listening to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type GSMC into your favorite podcast app to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news. Please subscribe to the podcast and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. Cryptocurrency is changing the way people interact with their money. It lets you be your own bank. But the problem is that the places you shop at don't accept crypto. BlockCard solves that. BlockCard is the easiest, cheapest, and best way to use your cryptocurrency to buy what you want, when you want, at over 50 million merchants globally. If you hold cryptocurrency, then you need a BlockCard. BlockCard is a pioneer in a new digital age that lets you use your crypto for everyday use. BlockCard has no exchange fees, no deposit fees, and no transaction fees. 
Sign up at freeblockcard.com and instantly get access to spend your crypto. What are you waiting for? Be your own bank and get a block card. Visit freeblockcard.com. That's freeblockcard.com.